Just for a moment, put yourself in their shoes. Eight years ago, Bruce and Denise Morecambe were like any other parents. Then their 13-year-old son Daniel was abducted from a bus stop on Queensland's Sunshine Coast. As days and weeks turned into years, they chased every lead, no matter how small or grim. They often scoured bushland for Daniel's body. Well, they found their boy now, buried just 40 kilometres from home. And finally, a man will face trial accused of his murder. But the Morecambe's journey isn't over. They're now trying to protect other children because no one should go through the hell they've suffered. Bruce and Denise Morecambe have searched the bush around the Sunshine Coast on foot countless times in the last seven and a half years. This is the first time they've seen it from the air. To find Daniel is uh, an extraordinary lucky break. Some farm sheds, a lonely swamp. This patch of ground is no different to much of the land around here. It was a bit eerie. Except it holds the precious remains of their son, Daniel. Is it just awful to come back here, or is the part of you drawn to this place? It's not a very nice place to be. I wish we were allowed to go down and help search. Even at 1,000 feet, the Morecams want to help. It's one of the ways they cope. But Denise still can't comprehend her boy is dead. That down there, four weeks ago, police started to find Daniel's bones. Have you yet come to terms with this being Daniel's final resting place? No. I still don't believe it. It's not as if I can go and see him. It's a very lonely place and, and uh, you know, such a sad end. I don't know that this is a, a nice question to ask you, but with the passage of time, has it got any easier? Has Daniel's loss got any easier for you? Um, well, the last few weeks have been extremely difficult, firstly with the arrest and then um, some bones were found. And we found out they were human bones. And then a week later we found out that um, they do belong to Daniel. It's like a knife goes in your chest every single phone call. And then... You know, we just got to wait for the next lot of bones to be found. And people are talking about bones, and like, I mean, that's you know, that's our son. It's not, you no, know, he belonged to us. He was a little human being. And they, you know, we get phone calls about bones. It's really hard. It's awful. Yeah. I think I speak for a lot of Australia when I say that uh, when I look at you and I look at Bruce, I want to cry. <laughs> We don't want people to cry looking at us. Yeah, well, we can't help it. <laughs> We're just we normal people. It. We just want to get on with our life and walk up and down the street. We don't want anyone to feel sorry for us. Um, you know, the pity's just not on our agenda. Our mission is to make sure that kids in Australia are safe. Um, the tragedy that is um, didn't, doesn't need to be again, so we can get that right. Right now, Bruce and Denise are taking that message on the road. You know, hope truly faded um, uh, just three and a half weeks ago um, when there was an arrest, charges laid. They answer the most difficult questions in the hope Daniel's experience will never be repeated. You, you are speaking to children Daniel's age when he went missing. Do you sometimes see your son's face there when you're speaking to them? Yeah, quite often you see a little boy that, you know, a 13 year old boy that looks just like Daniel and you sort of got to look away and look at, and look at someone else. So that's quite hard. often, yeah. Daniel disappeared from this bus stop on the 7th of December 2003. The 13-year-old was on his way to get a haircut and buy Christmas presents for his family. The bus he was waiting for didn't show up. It had broken down. The replacement bus, trying to make up lost time, didn't stop for Daniel, knowing a third bus was on its way. By the time that bus arrived, some three minutes later, Daniel had disappeared. It's nearly eight years and all we were ever looking for was that three minutes. Just fill in that three minutes and, and of course 
we would love to have that three minutes over again and just change the whole slide. It's just... It's not fair. No. Nothing in this has been fair. No. Has it? Nothing has. I mean, right from the start, I mean, it was just innocent going shopping. You know, to buy our Christmas presents and... It hasn't been seen since. Even before Daniel was due home, his mum somehow sensed something was wrong. When their trustworthy and punctual son didn't arrive with the last bus that afternoon, both Bruce and Denise started searching for Daniel straight away. It's getting desperate, we need him back. <laughs> we want Daniel back. I guess you must have had this growing sense of panic at this point in time. Uh, look, that, that evening was uh, absolutely horrendous. Um, it was worse than a nightmare. The hours just were absolutely agony and we felt Daniel was in, in danger somewhere and we were completely helpless. We didn't know what to do, what to look for. Um, we just felt we had to do something. Do you look at photos of Daniel very often? Not all the time, no. Too hard. The agony of that first night has been repeated every night since then. He just looks so innocent. Mm. He's doing his schoolwork, not a care in the world. For his parents, Daniel will always be on the cusp of his 14th birthday. But with his twin brother Bradley, now 21, and older brother, 23-year-old Dean... You can't help but notice you've got a little bit of artwork on your hands. Yeah, I've got a few. Look. Memories on my knuckles and got my left arms for Daniel. They also have a constant reminder of the young man he should be. Yeah. Oh, uh, gosh, the likeness is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, he did a pretty good job. The what-ifs for these brothers are just as painful as they are for Denise and Bruce. Daniel wanted them to go shopping with him that day, but both turned him down. Daniel asked me a few times if I want to go to the shops. I said, no, I don't want to go. I want to see my mates. He asked me again, oh, I don't want to go. I don't know why I didn't go by with him, so he went off by himself and then um, a few hours passed and, and basically um, he didn't catch the bus home, so... Do you have a sense of guilt about that? Um, no, not entirely. Not entirely. That means a little bit. Oh, well, you know, but you can't blame yourself. No, you can't. How would you describe the emotions you feel? There is times when you're angry, there's times, yeah, you just... Why did that have to happen to him? There wouldn't be many Australians who don't recognise Daniel Morecambe's name or his beautiful face. Bruce and Denise have made it their life work to find their son. Our son Daniel was abducted from a bus stop on the Sunshine Coast. But their appeals haven't always been so public. While the police did their investigation, the Morecams were being flooded with information. And for Daniel, they felt they had to follow up every lead. We had to check out every piece of information that people wanted to give us, and we did. Um, sometimes it was searching, um, you know, if they've given us a bit of a mud map, um, perhaps it was just uh, uh, a Google Earth, check out on the computer. Dozens of dozens of times we've uh, done private searches and uh, in all occasions, drew a blank. Bruce and Denise also conducted their own surveillance, but in the hunt for their son's abductor, Bruce put his own life on the line. Oh, it's flashing green. I think it's working. Bruce ventured into a world he'd never been before to meet people who claimed to have information about Daniel's disappearance. I'll sit here, is that all right? Yeah. They moved in a circle where lots of these rumours were coming from. Um, I felt um, if they're lying to police, because um, that, that's just something second nature to them, um, will they lie to Daniel's dad? So I just had to knock on some doors and say, please, have you got any information that may be helpful in finding my son? What they discovered was that crooks do lie in the cruelest way. According to police, those perverts had nothing to do with Daniel's disappearance, but got a twisted kick by boasting they did. The only relief is no one can hurt him anymore and we hope it was quick. And the biggest pain for me is thinking 
is feeling his pain uh, is is just horrendous. It's it's not what a parent needs to think about. Um, you know, if if it is hours or perhaps even days, um, that is uh, that's just not worth thinking about. Just thinking how scared he would have been. I mean, even when he was a little boy, he used to always get scared at night and come and sleep on the floor next to next to our bed. He used to curl up in our um, bedspread and just lie there. Yeah. I, um, I'm sorry. I don't mean to get upset, but um, when you don't when you don't have all the facts, how do you stop your mind wondering? How do you stop thinking about what happened to him? You don't. We've heard that many different stories of what different people have done to it to Daniel. Just just so many different stories that we've had had put to us, and we we don't know what what to believe. They are superhuman. I mean, the challenges they have faced have been numerous and confounding. Yeah, um, I don't know that they'd appreciate being called superhuman, but a lot of us would say that. Peter um, Boyce is Bruce and Denise's lawyer. He's never seen a more committed couple. They have been prepared, in my view, to be fearless. And that drive, I, I, I've never seen anyone with drive like that. I think what amazes so many about the Morecambs is that they are crippled by grief and yet they're not crippled. No. Um, Bruce's famous saying is they picked on the wrong family. Um, nothing could be truer than that. We'll go over there. As the years passed with no definitive answers about Daniel's abduction, instead of giving up, the Morecambs simply stepped up their campaign. With Peter Boyce's help, in October last year, they convinced the Queensland coroner to hold an inquest. The hope was to test some of the evidence already gathered and uncover new clues. But curiously, the police didn't see any merit in it. Their tenacity and strength, without it, would there have been an inquest? Oh, I doubt it very much. Uh, we, we felt that a coronial inquest being an independent body, away from police, away from the family, away from the contamination of other ideas, may be the way to go. And, you know, at the end of the day, it seems to have made a, a massive difference. It was an unbelievable breakthrough. Last month, police charged 42-year-old Brett Peter Cowan with Daniel's murder. Then they began searching the site where they found some of Daniel's remains. After fighting for seven and a half years for answers, Denise and Bruce finally got the news they never wanted. Their boy is dead. The last seven years I probably haven't really got that angry. I don't really know why. Now that you have, you potentially have somebody to focus your anger on. I'm still not angry. Still not angry? No. No. We're not, not going to bring Daniel back. No matter how much I scream or shout or, or whatever, it's not going to bring Daniel back. I just have to let the the court system, you know, do what has to be done to to this person. If he's guilty or not, it's up to the courts to decide. Just have lots of memories of um, Daniel and myself just doing homework together, going to school together, and. Um, yeah, just sort of doing everything we twins sort of do. So always together? Pretty basically, yeah. Yeah, every day. So how, how much do you miss him then? Um, yeah, I miss him a lot. Um, yeah. This isn't easy for you, is it? No, it's not. It's a grief that seems to be shared by much of Australia. In the last month, the Daniel Morecambe Foundation has been flooded by support from complete strangers to Daniel's old school friends. But it's on the road where the Morecams make their mark. In Daniel's name, they spread the child safety message, reminding all who listen, the 13-year-old with the unforgettable eyes was their boy, a boy just like any of these students. No, my body belongs to me. No, my body belongs to me. Thanks very much. We're done. They picked on the wrong family and nothing's been truer.
And you were never going to give up? We promised that from the first, first day, that we wouldn't give up on him. And not one day, have you? No. no. 